نحكي اليوم عن التعليم بفلسطين التعليم الرسمي والمناهج بفلسطين من وقت العثمانيين حتى يومنا هذا بشكل سريع وبعدين رح ندخل في النقاش في التفاصيل تم إنشاء أول مدارس ابتدائية بفلسطين تحت الحكم العثماني في 1869 لكن المشكلة بهاي المدارس أنها كانت تدرس فقط اللغة التركية مما أدى لعزوف سكان الفلسطينيين العرب في هذاك الوقت عن الذهاب لهذيك المدارس من 1917 ل 1948 كان في عنا الانتداب الكولونيالي البريطاني بفلسطين ومع أنه البريطانيين أدخلوا نظام التعليم الثانوي إلى فلسطين إلا أنه المشكلة الأساسية كانت تكمن بأنهم سيطروا على صنع القرار وعلى المناهج بشكل كامل البريطانيين عمدوا إلى إلغاء المنهاج التاريخ الحديث الفلسطيني لحساب الرواية الصهيونية الحقبة اللاحقة اللي هي الاحتلال الإسرائيلي طبعا من 1948 والنكبة التشتت الفلسطيني صاحب وتشتت في المناهج حيث وقع الفلسطينيين تحت أنظمة تعليم مختلفة مثلا اللي عاشوا في الأردن ولبنان وسوريا خضعوا لمناهج التعليم بهذيك البلاد الفلسطينية اللي كانوا عايشين بضفة الغربية خضعوا للمنهاج الأردني أما اللي كانوا عايشين في غزة خضعوا للمنهاج المصري في الفلسطينية اللي ضلوا عايشين داخل ما يسمى دولة إسرائيل اللي خضعوا للمنهاج الإسرائيلي بعد السبعة وستين تغير الوضع وخضعت الضفة الغربية وغزة وشرق القدس طبعا للاحتلال الإسرائيلي وصار التعليم تحت الحكم العسكري الإسرائيلي بشكل كامل ولم يكن للفلسطينيين أي سيطرة عليه تم تهميش الهوية والرواية الفلسطينية والجغرافيا والتاريخ الفلسطيني
إذا بنطلع على هاي النبذة السريعة لتاريخ التعليم بفلسطين بنلاحظ إنه العامل المشترك فيها كان دائما إنه الفلسطينيين لم يكن لهم أي سيطرة على صنع المناهج. In 1994, with the help of UNESCO, the Palestinians established their first ever curricula center. A team of researchers and education experts was assembled to study and analyze existing curricula and to recommend new ones. Finally, the Palestinians were allowed to decide what their children would study or that what they thought. Before the Palestinians released any of the new books, they found themselves under heavy attack by Israel and pro-Israel groups in the West. The most prominent of these was a Jewish American organization called the Center for Monitoring the Impact of Peace, CMIP, whose research director, Itamar Marcus, lives in one of the illegal settlements in the West Bank. Charges against Palestinians were that their books produced anti-Israeli bias. The map of Israel from a fourth grade textbook all of the cities are designated by Arabic names. Much of Jewish history has been quite literally wiped off the maps and pages of the Palestinian we Authority. educate the children to return all the refugees, meaning the end of Israel, because it means millions of I came here to Ramallah, to the heart of the West Bank, to talk to Palestinian officials at the Ministry of Education about their textbooks. I wanted to hear directly from them their explanations for why so much of their educational material seems to deny the existence of the State of Israel and glorify a culture of martyrdom or death to children. The storm that Israel started over Palestinian textbooks had reached policymakers in Europe and the U.S to the extent that, in the midst of the second uprising, in which hundreds of Palestinians were killed and an entire population was forced to live under virtual siege, what textbooks Palestinians were reading had become a major theme in the debate on how to end the uprising. These textbooks do not give Palestinian children an education they give them an indoctrination. When we view this report in combination with other media that these children are exposed to, we see a larger picture that is disturbing. It is disturbing on a human level. It is disturbing to me as a mother. It is disturbing to me as a United States Senator because it basically profoundly poisons the minds of these children. You know, words really matter. You know, some people sort of downplay the importance of words, but words really matter. Because in idealizing for children a world without Israel, children are taught never to accept the reality of the state of Israel, never to strive for a better future that would hold out the promise of peace and security, is basically a message of pessimism and fatalism that undermines the possibility for these children living lives of fulfillment and productivity. One of the Palestinian members of the textbooks committee, Professor Ali Jirbawi, summarized the dilemma that was facing the Palestinians over the development of their textbooks by posing few questions. What Palestine do we teach? Is it the historic Palestine with its complete geography or the Palestine that is likely to emerge on the basis of possible agreements with Israel. How do we view Israel? Is it merely an ordinary neighbor, or is it a state that has arisen on the ruins of most of Palestine? Jirbawi's questions unveiled the truth about the nature of Israel's objection over the Palestinian textbooks. Twenty years have passed by, and no answer has been found yet. The main reason for that is the pressure of Western funders on the Palestinians to develop curricula 
which will be acceptable to Israel. Today, the issue of Palestinian textbooks is still a hot one for Israel and its allies. It had even reached the last American presidential debate. The truth, these people are terrorists. They teach terrorism in their schools. They have textbooks that say if there are 13 Jews and nine Jews are killed, how many Jews are left? We pay for those textbooks through our aid money. It's fundamentally the time for somebody to have the guts to stand up and say, enough lying about the Middle East. The fight over the Palestinian textbooks is not a fight over math and science books. It is a fight over what the Palestinian students study in the history and geography books. Israel wants the Palestinian children to study the narrative of the occupier.